Alright guys, welcome back to the channel for another video on the Hyper. Um, now in this video I want to keep it um, pretty short. Uh, we're going to go through um, the top five things that I am loving about this new bike. Uh, we're about to go into two week lockdown here in New South Wales. So I thought I'd get out quickly on the bike and uh, give you guys my top five things. Alright, let's get on the bike. Oh. <sighs> All right. Oh, just before we get on, just going to give you a bit of an update on what we've done to the bike. We've got some new um, billet aluminium Rosoma uh, pegs. They look pretty nice, better than the stock ones. And we um, did this carbon uh, rear hugger to match the front in the matte sort of carbon. Looks really good. Don't know why. They didn't just, um, yeah, do the front and the back, but yeah, it looks much better. All right, let's get back on. Ugh. All right. All right. So, number one, guys, first thing we're going to talk about is this amazing dash. Now, for a hyper motard, oh, listen to that sound. Um, you know, it's definitely the best um, for this style of bike. Um, it's, you know, it's not overly big, but um, gives you everything you need apart from a bloody fuel gauge. But um, yeah, I just love how, um, you know, for a bike like this, a Supermoto, a lot of the others only have very, very basic sort of stuff. This one's got a beautiful dash, um, gives you all your riding modes, um, you know, and you can change everything, which is really nice. Uh, but yeah, all right, so that's number one. Number two whew, is the way this bike handles and the way it feels. Um, you know, I've ridden a lot of bikes. Um, this is my first sort of hyper motard style of bike um, that I've really ever ridden, apart from the 821 that I took for a, uh, a spin. But, yeah, just the way this bike handles, being a really tall bike, um, and also uh, being fairly light, although for hypermotard standards this is quite heavy, being about 190... Oh, about 190 kilos. So it's, you know, for a hypermotard it's, it's actually pretty heavy. But you definitely don't feel it, um, and that's a cool thing. Like, like throwing it around in the corners uh, and riding this bike, and even moving it around stationary, you don't feel the weight at all. Um, you know, it flicks side to side so easily, and I think the fact that it's got a little bit more weight to it actually makes the bike feel quite planted. Um, and having a bigger, this one's got a 180. Uh, rear tire on it for a supermoto that's quite big most of the others are 160 um, so that makes a big difference um, even for me I think having this as an only bike at the moment um, and doing sort of um, you know highway speeds uh, you know faster roads um, you know and so many people have said to me oh this is not a bike that you can do everything with for me like I've been commuting to work which I work about 30 kilometers away from where I live and um, you know it's majority of its highway and uh, it's no problem at all it's a bit of wind but um, I mean if you stick on 100 110 it's more than manageable um, sure it's a little more than your average sport bike or naked with a bit more um, of a fairing but it's no problems at all really you get used to it, um, and I think for the compromise of this kind of bike, it's just um, a no-brainer. Yeah, so the handling, guys, it's just so good. Um, it's so it's so easy to flick side to side. It um, yeah, and it just like I said, it feels lighter than it is. Um, and being a taller bike, um, and when you look over the front, obviously you can't really see the front tire. You know, you're very much in a supermoto sort of like dirt bike style of riding position with your feet pretty you know straight up and down 
Um, it just, yeah, I don't know. It, it's just so much fun at normal speeds. You know, you don't have to be doing stupid speeds. You know, going at, you know, 150 kilometers an hour. You don't have to do that on this bike to have fun. And that's why I'm just loving this bike so much compared to, you know, a lot of the other bikes that I've ridden is you can just have fun on this bike in the twisties and not going a million miles an hour, which is just so refreshing. Oh, bloody lights. Um, yeah, so number two, handling of this bike is just out of this world and it would be so fun on track as well. Um, so yeah, guys, handling, number two, awesome. Okay, number three is the uh, the sound of this bike. I mean, that V-twin Supermoto, I'm not a huge fan of normal, like, twins and, and the sound of actual Supermoto, like, dirt bikes. Um, I've never been a fan of that, um, and I'm, I'm. This has got a little twang to it with a, with the stock exhaust of of a twin. It's interesting. Um, you know, it doesn't really sound like your typical Ducati. Um, it's, a, it's a little. It's funny. They've they've done something. It's it sounds very supermoto like, um, but it's got that deeper sort of note. Um, you know that you'd expect from a Ducati and being a big V twin. Um, you know, it's just, um, yeah, yeah, I, I can't wait, you know, we've got an exhaust plan, we've, I'll, I'll let you guys in on a bit of a secret here, we've got an SC Project exhaust coming for this bike, um, I'm not going to tell you which one it is just yet, but it's going to be loud, um, and I just can't wait to hear that bike, I can't wait to hear the sound of that pipe, it's going to be just, uh, insane. So yeah, guys, number three, alright, number four... Um, is just how powerful this is for a supermoto. You know, this isn't, you know, crazy specs. Um, you know, this is only what, uh, you know, it's 100, about 114 horsepower. But to be honest, you don't need any more than that. Like, to me, this bike feels fast. Like, it feels more than capable of keeping up with sport bikes. The torque is where this bike is at, um, you know, almost 100 newton meters of torque. This bike definitely, um, it moves. And, and the thing is, well, let me get through here. And the thing is, um, we're still in our braking period, so we haven't been able to really flog the bike just yet. And up to your normal, like, sort of safe, don't lose your license speeds um this bike is super quick you know it's like zero to 100 in like you know three and a half no under three and a half seconds you know you think about what cars can keep up with you know this from zero to sort of norm normal riding and driving speeds um, you know, you know, merging onto highways, um, you know, going through the twisties, you're not doing crazy speeds, and, um, and that's the thing, that you can actually use this power, um, hopefully we don't get stuck behind too much traffic, and I'll open it up a little bit more, I still can't go crazy, but, um, I can't wait till we've done a thousand kilometers. We're only at 5.31 at the moment. We're going on a big ride tomorrow, hopefully. Um, and that'll uh, up my kilometers a bit. But, yeah, it's just so manageable, so usable. It's still, like, it's still super, super fast. Especially with the quick shifter, makes things so much easier. The quick shifter actually has gotten better. I will admit. So in my earlier videos, I did say that the quick shifter was um, sort of playing up a little bit, um, and it is better. It, it's just not so good at lower speeds. But really, I, you don't really you're not meant to use a quick shifter at low speeds, anyways. Um, it does work, but yeah, it's a bit clunky. But it's definitely like that. Like it's got it's gotten a lot better, which is good. I'm really happy about that. But yeah, the the pace on this bike, you know, and I've come from. S1000s and um, you know the MT10 and all those bikes that are, st are silly fast but to be honest they the difference is only up high so you'd only really notice the difference 
um, you know when you're really really far up in the RPMs and going at faster speeds um, which you know for me I really would like to keep my license um, and that's why you know so many guys you know um, you know commenting on a lot of my videos are saying uh, you know oh you know you're not really giving the bike you know what I don't want to give the bike I don't want to go at stupid speeds you know like it's not always about that if you want to go and watch if you want to go and look at that go look at track videos of all the other journalists but I'm not about that I'm giving you my thoughts on the bike at how everyone should be you know riding around normally on the road on the street and not trying to lose my license um, so yeah, this bike is amazing power-wise. Um, you know, I really, I really can't say how how good this bike is in the fact it sits right in that sweet spot of you can just have so much fun. Um, you know, it's way more, it's more bike than I'm ever going to use. Um, I would, if in all honesty. If I could have another bike, like an S1000 RR or a Panigale V4S, like a stupid fast bike as my second bike, that would be awesome. I would love that. But I think those bikes for your one and only bike, it doesn't work. Because you can't use the bike. So what's the point? It's fun, I know. But it's fun as a second bike or a third bike or whatever. I don't think you can use... 10 or 20 percent of an S1000 doubler or a Ducati Panigale V4 unless you want to lose your license um, it's simple as that um, I've ridden so many bikes um, you know I've been riding for ages um, and to be honest the likes of this sort of bike your you know uh, what else is there your um, oh, Triumph Street Triples of the world those sort of bikes are really where the sweet spot is. Um, even even a speed uh, a speed triple um, through Triumph, uh, you know that's really where that sweet spot is, where it's not overly powerful, handles great, have a heap of fun. The torque is there, and that's what it's really about, guys. It's the torque. The torque is the addictive part. Um, you know, look at that, like, it's just, it's instant, this bike, it's so much fun, I'm not even in sport mode, um, and it's, you know, heaps of fun, heaps of fun. Um, so yeah, guys, I, I, uh, and I love the ability of this bike, you know, you can stand up, um, you know, it's really comfortable, the seat, I find the seat really comfortable, for me, handlebars are really comfortable, it's just, um, yeah, I, I really am enjoying this bike, such a good bike. Um, I really struggle to find some negative parts. I will do another video on the top five things that um, that I have that I don't like. But I tell you what, it's going to be hard. Now, the fifth, uh, the fifth uh, number five in this series, uh, I'm going to get off the bike and I'm going to show you what number five is. Uh, give me a give me a few minutes, guys, and uh, we'll find a little spot to. Um, to pull over and I'll uh, explain number five. All right, guys, so number five is the looks of this bike. Um, now, going through my motorcycling sort of love when I first started, uh, my very first sort of bike that I fell in love with was a Triumph Daytona 675. I think it was an R. Um, had an arrow exhaust, quick shifter. I was having a look at a shop, uh, a Triumph shop down in Wollongong, and this bike pulled out of the driveway and it had a quick shifter, banged through the gears, and I fell in love with that bike and that sound. Um, and ever since then, I've loved bikes. Um, and I've gone through sort of liking, you know, naked bikes. I really, really liked a lot of the naked bikes, I had a lot of them. Um, then I went through, I bought the sport bikes, um, yeah, I bought the S1000 RR, which I really loved, um, and I came to love that bike, loved the looks of it, and supermotos were never really on my radar, um, until recently, until I saw this bike in person, um, I saw, heard it, I fell in love with it, especially this model, um, 
the SP. Um, I think it just looks so cool having that big engine, you know, like a dirt bike on steroids. You've got the, the forged wheels, you know, Olins, carbon bits, the way the exhaust wraps around there, um, fat tyre on the back. I've just, I've l absolutely fallen in love with this design. Um, and, I, and I've come to like a few of the, I love the Husqvarna 701s, I love the way they look, um, and the KTM 690, um, you know, awesome bikes, but they're very, very focused on pure supermoto, this is kind of like a hybrid, um, you know, this is mixed between a sport bike, sort of a naked bike, and a supermoto, and that's what I love, um, it's kind of the best of both worlds. Um, so yeah guys, number 5, the way this beauty looks, absolutely love it, just look at it, look at the bike, can't wait to get the exhaust, it is going to be a dual exhaust still, um, we've got a different tail tidy coming, got the Ducati performance one coming, um, because this one will get, these uh, in indicators will get burnt, um, so we've had to go for a slightly longer one, it's going to be a carbon one. Hopefully it looks pretty cool. Um, so you guys, then I'll probably be pretty much done um, with modifying this bike, um, which is awesome. We're going to get the um, the guards, radiator guard and coolant guard. Um, but when that's done, we're pretty much done and dusted. What is that? But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you're enjoying the videos. We're at over a thousand subscribers. Can't thank you guys enough for the support. Keep it going, guys. Send us comments. Um, don't forget to like each video. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch you for the next video, guys. See you later.